There is an anxious and weary feeling across the land as Americans cast their ballots. You can feel it in the polling place. People are really a little overwhelmed by the situation the not only the country but the world is in. Hear it on the playground. The country has gone downhill and so it's going to be hard to get it turned around. And sense it in the unemployment office. Now I'm back down in the trenches again and I'm still just trying to fight and try to hold on. The excitement of four years ago when voters swept a charismatic and eloquent young black man into office is gone, scoured away by years of grinding unemployment, painful recovery, relentless partisan attacks, and a sense of disappointment, even amongst his most hopeful followers. We're anxious. We're anxious about what the results of this election are going to be. I mean, most people realize this is not as easy as a Tweedledum, Tweedledee situation, that there are more things at stake in this election. What's at stake for Americans is the nature of the country's social contract. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Barack Obama represents the view that government has a role in supporting the poor, unemployed, sick, and elderly, regulating Wall Street and reining in the excesses of capitalism. We have been historically a communitarian society as opposed to a libertarian society. That idea is under assault by a libertarian uh, view. The, the idea that essentially not only are you entirely responsible for your own life, but you are on your own. Mitt Romney and his running mate, Paul Ryan, believe in the ideology of the marketplace and individual responsibility. In a nation whose government should shrink, social support programs should be scaled back or privatized, and taxes on wealth should be reduced. It's a radical deconstruction of every gain that the majority of people in this country have received or won since the first decade of the 20th century. Advocates of smaller governments say cutting spending on social programs is essential to avoid a future fiscal calamity. And reducing the budget deficit and easing regulations will return the U.S. to healthy economic growth. Limited government is how our economy thrives. We see with hampering reg regulations, high taxes, uh, out of control spending, that that really kills economic growth. It kills it kills um, the entrepreneurial spirit. It creates a lot of uncertainty that's really bad for, for a growing, uh, bustling economy. The divisions run deep. Poll after poll shows Obama and Romney in a virtual tie. And the level of bitterness in the campaign is extraordinarily high. I think we're more vicious, yeah. Uh, we keep, th I keep thinking we, we hit bottom and we keep getting lower and lower. But even beyond the ugly, negative campaign, something deeper seems to have shifted, cracking the surface of traditional American optimism. A majority of Americans say they are dissatisfied with the way things are going and feel the country is heading down the wrong track. Fewer than a quarter of Americans believe today's children will have a better future than their parents. Economic inequality in the U.S. is at historically high levels. And with that concentration of wealth in fewer and fewer hands, political inequality is growing as well. A tiny percentage of extremely wealthy Americans can use the power of their money to advance their political agendas. Production on government land the two candidates themselves, as well as independent political action groups called super PACs, have raised billions of dollars. It certainly makes candidates uh, more sensitive to the needs of the very rich who are funding their campaigns than they otherwise would be if all they were concerned with was getting the votes of all of us. Um, so that's number one. But number two, it leads most of us to think they can't help but be beholden to the interests of the very, very rich who are funding their campaigns. Many people around the globe see the U.S. as a fading superpower. But are there good reasons for the rest of the world to pay attention to this election? The simplest way of answering that question is just reminding people of George W. Bush and Al Gore. If Al Gore had won, uh, it's very likely that the invasion of Iraq would have not happened. 
uh, and the invasion of Iraq and the war in Iraq and everything else that ensued and the trillions of dollars of expenditures plus everything else that happened uh, essentially hinged on the results of a few votes in, in Florida, few votes that changed the world. Once again, this year, a few votes could affect the future of these children and millions of others around the world. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Washington.